Welcome to Map It Marketing for small business owners who want to become more confident and capable in their marketing. I'm Rachel Claver, and I'm a small business owner just like you. I've learned that there are so many different things that we are supposed to do all the time. And trying to work it all out is quite frankly often very confusing. In this podcast, we're going to explore what those things are and whether you need to pay attention to them. Ready? Let's get started. Great images of your products and of you can make selling what you do a whole lot easier. I know for me, our business changed when I finally dug in deep and paid for a proper photo shoot of me and um, at that time my team as well to get great photos that we could use for our marketing. Now, even if you're on a budget, the investment of great photography is one of those things that I say is a must-have and often when I'm working with a client, their photography is really letting them down and affecting sales. That's why I'm thrilled on episode 24 of Map It Marketing to have with us today the hipster mum herself, Jade Warren. She specializes in helping business owners with their stunning photography and videos and also helps a lot with advice around digital marketing. She has got an amazing pedigree. She has Snap Kate Hudson, Sarah Jessica Parker, Um, Marie Folio, Elizabeth Gilbert and Al McPherson, but now her favourite clients are business owners just like you and me. She's based in Australia and she, like me, are in lockdown. So you'll see photos and video if you're watching the video version of me and my wardrobe still because, yes, it's still done there. She also is so passionate about talking about the struggles that business owners who are also mothers can struggle with in terms of trying to manage and keeping everything all balanced. So we had a great chat about that. I am so looking forward to sharing this with you today. Now, before we jump in and start, there's just two things I want to um, share with you. The first is do come along to our Map It Marketing Facebook group. I'd love you to be part of it. Um, And you can ask questions in there about the podcast. We're on Facebook. I'll put the link in the show notes. And I also would love it if you considered coming along to our webinar for quarter four for any of you with e-commerce or retail businesses, we're going through a complete strategy. It's live on October the 7th, so you haven't got much time to book your ticket, Um, but I'll put a link to that in here. And if you join the Map It Marketing Facebook group, you get a sneaky discount in that group. So that'll be right. Now, let's get kickstarted and welcome Jade Warren and her helping us work out our product and personal photography path. Hello and welcome to the Method Marketing Podcast. I'm so excited because we've got a great guest for you today. It's Jade and your business, Jade, before I ask, because um, I always call you Hipster Mum Social, is that your business name? Yes, Hipster Mum okay, was my name. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So Hipster Mum Social, and I am so excited for you to hear her wisdom around product photography. We've had a little chat just before the podcast about being a mum, so we're going to cover that probably too. It's hard to keep that separate from our businesses when we're parents, so we're going to talk about that and a whole lot of other bits and pieces. Jade is currently in lockdown um, in Australia. I'm in lockdown in Auckland while we're recording this, so we've both had the feels of being five weeks in, and we're feeling it. Um, but you know, hey, I'm recording from my walk and wardrobe, so we've got this. Uh, thank you so much for listening to these episodes. Thanks for the feedback that you give. Thank you so much for those of you that have said you've learned something. I love it when you at me in a post and go, Hey, Rachel, I've just tried this thing that I learned from the podcast, it just gives me the joys. So, thank you so much. And Jade, thank you so much for getting, coming and being part of the podcast today. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you so much for having me. My name is Jade. My handle is Hipster Mum Social. I am a photographer, videographer, digital marketer, and mum of three. So very busy, um, but I love what I do. I love supporting other women in business with the kind of, I call myself a visual wingman because um, we are visual creatures as humans. Mm-hmm. And um, when you're in business, you've got you know so many things going on. You really do need a wingman in your life just to help you. And you know, we've been taught like all along, oh, we need a graphic designer or we need a photographer or we need this and that, but you don't. You just need one person who gets you, who's got your back, who's your wingman in this, and together you can make magic. And you're an example of that, Rachel, you know, working with really oh. lean teams. We yes. don't have, you know, massive budgets, but also we can't do it all ourselves. You do need that objective opinion. You do need that source of expertise. And so I just bring all 
my knowledge and experience to bear for the tiniest clients and the biggest clients. And I photographed Kate Hudson. I photographed Elle McPherson, but I've also photographed so many women in business, mothers particularly, who um, who aren't used to um, perhaps seeing themselves as I see them. I see their brilliance. I see their competence. I see their professionalism. And I see them thriving despite not having a makeup artist, a chef, a personal trainer, <laughs> all the things that we're used to consuming, at, you know, of people at, at a certain level, of business people at a certain level. But through my photography, I can elevate women around me to have that look like a superstar. And so that's what I love to do. I think that I often put in people's marketing strategies that one of the things I want them to do is go and get a proper brand shoot. And the reason I put that in there is partly because you get heaps of photos that you can use on your social, which is great. You know, if you're coming out with 40 to 80 photos, that's a lot of things you can use. But I often suggest it because my brand shoot, the first one I ever had, which was, you know, three or four years ago, I came out of that and I was like, oh, is this how I'm seen? And and to be honest, the initial one was like, oh, holy crap, is that how I'm seen? And then I stepped back from it and went, no, is that how I'm seen? And I shared some of the bad photos in a group and people will said, if you share that photo on social media, I'm working with you tomorrow. And I realized that the photographer had captured my personality and my essence had made me feel comfortable. And that was what I had been missing from my confidence, my branding. Like it actually made me more confident. And that's what you do, isn't it? Like you were yeah. seeing, you were actually seeing the person inside them and bringing that out when you do photography. Absolutely. And I think we're all held back by our own perceptions of ourselves, of our daggy face when we wake up in the morning. This is who I am. But you know, we, all of us can transform into Angelina Jolie superstars mm-hmm. in the right studio, in the right lighting, with the right makeup, with the right clothes. So it it's about what story do you want to tell? That's what I like to think about with my clients. It, let's not be, you know, we all are who we are and we're multifaceted, infinite spiritual beings. But let's think about, okay, who do you need to be in a business sense? Who, you know, what is that person? How do they show up? What do they wear? What are they, what colors are important to them? And let's bring that construction to life for you so that you can communicate really succinctly, swiftly with your ideal client to make those connections in a split second before any thought has gone on. So I, um, I definitely get get what you're saying in that it, it's both it's both the reality but it's also a construction it, it's a duality it, it's both things going on at once I love the idea of the construction because one of the things I have done and people are surprised by this I, I was um, catching up with a friend on a live a few weeks ago and she'd made a comment about how she put her brightest dress on because she's gonna be doing it with me and I was like oh crap I'm wearing all black and because I'm known for wearing bright but it's because I literally have a separate business wardrobe So when I'm on camera, for the majority of the time, there are clothes I don't actually wear out, like they're not my normal clothes, but they are, when I put them on, they are authentically me. It's a huge part of me, but it's the playful, businessy, out there part of me. And then there's a whole real boring, quiet, serious part of me that isn't being shown. Exactly. Cameras allow you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a, this is a, um, this is a, playbook move like a known textbook move so Todd Herman is a psychologist he works with the top athletes in the world and he calls it creating your alias creating your your Mm. superman and part of that is your wardrobe part of that is your branding colors part of that is the the phrases you use so when we think about business I hugely recommend and again this is why people work with me because it's not just a photo shoot I don't just give you a photo Mm. we collaborate and connect in a way that can take your story in its complex kind of, um, you know, brilliantness and convert it into this really simpl- simplistic thing. But part of that is I always encourage my clients to create an alias for themselves. So who is your business alias? She, for you, she's colourful, she's confident, she's articulate, she's got the practical answers that you need. Of course you're nervous. Of course you're yeah. um, made mistakes. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course we have. We all have. But we don't need to bring that in every interaction. And certainly in a business interaction, I always advise people to pick and choose which part of yourself you're going to bring to that interaction and then pour yourself into that. Get your confidence from that. You know, what music does she listen to? Who does she admire? You know, you just surround yourself with that kind of um, that that aura and then you become it. it it's as simple as that. 
Yeah, and I think that some people listening to that will go, oh, that doesn't sound like it's real. It is very real. Like I feel like I'm introverted as well. And people are often surprised that I'm introverted. Um, but I like, there is a public persona and there are part that I share a lot about my life and share things I, I share today on my stories about how this is a very embarrassing story. I can't believe I'm telling it on a podcast. I'm walking down the beach and I was like, I think it feels a bit off. And my zip from my, my sports bra had gone like completely down and I couldn't pull it up because there was all these people around me. Like I had clothes on over the top and I'm like, Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. I think I might head home, you know, like that. I tell those stories that that's a personal story. Like I'm being, I'm sharing those things, but I'm sharing it from a (laughs) point of view rather than, oh my gosh, that was mortifying. And I felt both of those things in that instant of this is hilarious and I'm so embarrassed, but I'm not going to pull the thread of that embarrassed, mortified part that, that, that introverted, please let me just call under a rock. I'm not going to pull that out. I'm going to pull out the funny side of it. Absolutely. And it's a conscious choice. It's a conscious effort. And this is this is all data driven and data proven. Like this psychologist, he recommends to elite athletes to visualize your alias achieving success, all those kinds of things. How do you think you get there? What do you think the edge is? This is a science. This is part of it. And we in our small business lives can also take inspiration and thought from exactly what you've said, taking your experience and then choosing, okay, which part of this am I going to use? as fuel to take me to the next stage. So um, but absolutely practical advice, not um, not woo-woo or um, yeah, I love it. intangible so, at all. Because I think the other thing, and we talked about this before the podcast started, I, I hate it when people say that on podcasts, but we did. Um, so, so, but we talked about how there's that juggle between being a mum and being a business owner. And I think one of the biggest gifts, and we talked about how much we love being a business owner, but there's this battle. I think one of the gifts of having that persona is you can move and shift out of the one where you are having to go, oh, for goodness sake, can you please stop putting the toilet rolls, leaving them on the thing, or, you know, who did this, or why are there no teaspoons, or who left this mess? You're able to remove yourself from that and be in a space where you're not that person in that instant. Absolutely. Where you're competent, capable, supportive. Helping others is what lights us up as human beings. And as a business people, we solve other people's problems. So again, that's all part of your persona. What's the problem? What's the pain point that your customers face? How do you solve that? How do we show that transformation? So um, yeah, I work with clients on all types of ways to do this. It could be video. It could be stop motion. It could be stills. I love the different surfaces that we have to use these days. You're on YouTube um, we've got Instagram Reels. Like there are so many different ways um, you can communicate what you do and the and the pain that you solve and the value that you bring. Um, and uh, that's also a source of overwhelm for a lot of people. So that's again why I love to work with women in business because I can look at someone and it's my superpower. I can see their story. I can see the best way to showcase it, and I can work with them one on one in a really beautiful, vulnerable way to bring that to life and help them feel more confident about it. I absolutely love. Now, you mentioned before stop motion, you're talking about product based photography. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about people and their brand, but when we're coming to talk about product based brand and, and, and those sort of things, um, are those good ways to use the need for reels and for video without having to show your face? Yeah, absolutely. So, for product photography, some tips I have around that are um, you can shoot really great product photos, you don't at home with a really small and simple setup near a beautiful window with a lot of natural light, white walls, white floors, white ceilings. You don't want any weird color casts coming into it. Um, You know, imagine a photo studio, typical photo studio. That's kind of like what you want to create. But if you're photographing earrings, you can make a little mini photo studio that's 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. That's exactly if your your product is um, jewelry, um, accessories, office supplies. That's why we see those types of products do so well on Instagram because they're really easy to photograph in this beautiful kind of square boxy little way you will notice once you get to things like shoes or handbags or even just slightly bigger like clothing that all of a sudden is actually a big difference in size so one of the things you're going to want to think about first with your product is you know what size is my product and you know what size of space can I um can I use because yeah once you get to clothing and things like that it's It's a lot harder it's harder because also with clothing like clothing is made to be fluid and moving and so you know finding a way to do that if you don't want to be the model or if you don't feel like if you don't fit the clothes or don't suit 
that particular thing or don't you know like that is I can see how that is a lot harder to do that yourself mm. um, and, and you're saying things like I guess it's kind of drilling down because you're seeing things like t-shirt brands do really well yeah because absolutely. t-shirts again have a more kind of yeah square and, yeah. and stable shape so I think yeah if you it's like what you, your advice for everything it's niching 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 right That's down simple. yeah yeah make it really simple what's your hero shape that you're working with mm-hmm. and then craft a little studio for that and you'll be able to do a lot of great photography at home with your iPhone the new iPhones are amazing they amazing are. it was yeah. interesting I was also watching a couple of other quite big influence um, Instagram influencers and they were talking about how the fact that and you know obviously if you don't have an iPhone that's totally okay but they were saying that Instagram is actually designed to work best with iPhones because there's only a few models and so Instagram can really fix it whereas there's thousands of different other phones so Instagram finds it really hard to make sure so the sound quality the video quality everything works super well with Instagram which I thought was really interesting yeah well that's why I have an iPhone and I use Macs specifically like that was a specific choice that I made because of the integration and the seamlessness between transferring files between your iMac and your laptop and your phone and all those kind of really simple things that you do on a minute by minute basis. So absolutely, I think an iPhone is pretty essential. Um, I think setting up a small studio space at home with good natural light is essential. Um, I think um, the thing, so when you, the difference between working with a professional for product photography is that I can set up the lighting and I can shoot from 6am till 9pm and we will get consistent results the entire way. That's what you're actually paying for for me so you're paying for that consistency you're paying the volume yep Yep. and also the creative eye that knows how to showcase products in a really cool way I think you would understand as someone who is on Instagram that you know that flat lay trend was all around and everyone's kind of mocking it up and styling but and then you go oh my gosh please no I still see it actually like when I'm doing research for other clients and I have to look at accounts and I'm just like no 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 well (laughs) I love a good flat it's lay, gorgeous. but I mean, you would understand the time warp that goes into it. Like yeah, we're talking a good about one's the, beautiful. Yeah, a good one is beautiful. But if you're a small business person and you could spend an entire day to get one okay flat lay that you have to chuck ten thousand filters on, and is that a good use of your time? Maybe not. Maybe you'd be better off posting your products to a photographer who has all the colored backdrops who has all the props who can like smash out your entire product range in one day along with stop motion along with really clever you know slice it with music or add it in you know the square format plus the portrait format plus a landscape format yeah. all these different things so it's yeah thing like the product if you've got great product photography like if you're using them on your website you've got them on your socials you can use them in your emails um you know you can use them across everything you can even create video with them and, and all those different things you are this is an investment that I think like as soon as you can possibly afford it this is something you should be outsourcing Um, unless you're a photographer and you absolutely love it this is something you should outsource to a a, a product photographer who knows what they're doing because it is the visual is so important yeah absolutely and I just think it it's the it's the it's the volume it's the consistency it's the getting your look and feel as you would know if you have tried to shoot something in natural daylight if you shoot at 10 a.m the color of the light will be yellow if you shoot at 2 p.m the color of the light will be blue so you will have like your products looking totally different colors from totally different times so it really is about just your level of business and where you're at um but I love working with products I love making them shine um I've got I, I had the three different types of product shots that I recommend you take So if you're starting to shoot your product, one is obviously beauty, showcase the beauty of your product. Um, The next one I recommend you take is show how it solves your client's problem. So educate them in this is how you use my product and this is the problem that it solves. Um, And then finally, the the other kind of um, recommendation that I have for the product is kind of showing them... um, you know, kind of in motion, kind of showing them moving around, showing them not just stills. I think that as we've heard a million different times is, you know, video is where it's at. Moving pictures are always going to capture the attention of the human eye better than a still. So having that video capacity as well is just like, I think it's moving from a nice to have to an essential. So that's part of the package. And definitely like I know that I was watching a TikTok about, um, 
Instagram shopping and live shopping will be here within six months. They're testing it in some regions and areas. So to have that confidence of being able to use your products on video and having video with your products is going to become really, really important. Um, Mm -hmm. I also think, um, I often say that um, social media is like a kitten. You need to feed it off and it likes anything that moves. 110%. And that's the thing, isn't it? Volume. Have you got (laughs) the time to crank out this how many like you so in my shoots where I shoot for people for product shots I will deliver hundreds of photos I know you mentioned earlier that walking away with 40 to 80 photos is good Mm -hmm. for me that's not enough if someone's investing their time and money with me they're going to walk away with 200 to 500 to a thousand images per shoot because I know the volume that you need exactly as you said like it it's hungry this thing needs a lot of content and, and they, if you're it can be slightly similar but just a little bit different to create that look and feel yeah absolutely how many times have you told your and you know for, and for me it's serving not only my client but that's also serving you when you get the photos and you're deploying them you're like hallelujah someone yeah, gets so it much someone easier. supplied me yeah. with the asset that's <laughs> landscape and portrait and yes. square finally I don't need to like you know, zhuzh it around. So I think it's about working with someone who gets the social media landscape. It's not good enough to working with a graphic designer who spits out a PDF that is just static and dead. Like, how am I supposed to cut that up in Canva? You need to work with someone who is on social, who understands how you're going to be using these images and who wants to support you, get your message out there in all the different surfaces that are available. So one of the things I like about your Instagram account is you do you don't shy away from using bright color. And I've seen that with your product photos as well. And obviously I'm a bright cover, color lover too, so I'm biased. But one of the things that I do find I get a bit tired of on social media is this whole, um, I'm going to call it mudge, that muddy beige kind of thing that's going on with everything has to always be naturals. And it becomes samey if everything's always the same. And I think one of the things I've really liked about watching your pro- your product photos is obviously you would do a range. Is you shouldn't you should be following the feel and of your brand rather than the fashion. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Look, I I'm I'm a bit different from you. I don't mind the neutral trend. You can see behind me. I'm a oh of, yeah, it looks nice behind you. I'm just <laughs> I get a bit tired of it on the Instagram feeds all the time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and I totally get that. I um in my previous life I was an editor at Marie Claire. So I'm absolutely. Oh, you love fashion. the neutrals. Ah, oh, fashion trends <laughs> and minimalism and you know maximalism and all these different things. So the reason I use bright is a very conscious decision in that I want to stand out. I use sans serif fonts because I want them to be easily read. Yes. I want to hit people over the head with amazing value, and I want them to remember me. These are conscious decisions I have made. I it's am not. Done too. So I agree. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean. Yeah, you can go with a trend or you can have a conscious decision on how you want to position yourself in the market and how you want to be received. I want to stand out. I'm, As I've said to you before, I'm a mom of three. I don't have heaps of time to spin on Instagram and be really loosey-goosey with my time and everything. I'm out there to smash it out, do what I need to do, and then get home and work on the next job, which, as we've discussed, has its own problems because burnout among Instagram users, small business owners, is a really big deal. So, the, you know, I'm not criticizing one or the other. I'm just saying that this is my take on it. And like I said, with everything, if you take anything from this podcast, it's be intentional, be conscious, <laughs> know that you can make decisions about how you're portrayed, how you're perceived, and then work with someone who gets that, who's going to work with you to make it a reality. Because I think that the easiest way to stand out is to go against the tide. You know, like you don't have to do that. Like literally, if you love that, like don't, anyone listening who goes oh my whole thing is is totally much um I don't want you to totally think that I'm saying that's bad like I love I love a good old neutral but it's more that thing of if you want to just have an like some of the easy ways to stand out is to make things up I love that you talked about the font because I I read a couple of people who've got these beautiful brands and they look gorgeous but they've used a very strong cursive font and I can't understand what it says and I have to sit there going what does it say what are you saying there and I don't want to have that Yes, absolutely. And sometimes I will use that cursive font to slow people down, Mm. to deliver a complicated message that I want them to have to decipher. So it's never about this is bad, this is good. It's about what's your intention? 
with what you're doing? Do you want to create a soft, natural, immersive place for people to relax into and spend their time in there? Then go ahead with the beautiful, natural, rattan, linen, beauty. I I love that just as much Mm -hmm. as anything. Or do you want people to sign up, get the value, click through here, you know, action this. This is a a car salesman. You know, they've used this since the dawn of time. There's nothing new on Instagram. So it's just about um, taking the the cultural signals and messages that have always been available and then adapting them to your personal brand and the way that you want to be perceived and what I love about this is there is no right or wrong it's more about Mm. being thinking about it being um having the intent having this purpose behind it of this is knowing why you're doing it is really Mm -hmm. and that's what you're saying absolutely yeah and I do have a massive tip for anyone listening who's like I don't even know why like you know that is one of the the realities of being a human being it is so hard you know, to even work out. So my tip is to get on Pinterest and to look through beautiful images and scroll and scroll and scroll and something will come to you that will stand out to you and it will be a beautiful vase or it will be a a, a type, it will be um, a colour, it will be a location, it will be a garment and you, as you pull these together in their different threads, all of a sudden you'll open up your board and you'll go, oh my God, that's what I love. I love that navy blue or I love that bottle green or I love that pure white in all different textures. And that is what you use for your brand colors, for your, your the slogans will appear to you. You don't have to invent the wheel. You're not doing anything like that. You're just immersing yourself in your style that you love and letting it give you energy. And then that becomes your style. And then you can take that and project that to the world. So it's such a practical and concrete way to find the elements of you I think that's awesome now so you you do have bright on your social but you've got the neutrals at the back as well is that that divide between um Jade the business owner and Jade the parent or the mother or the yeah look well I mean sometimes some things are just practical we've um recently moved and you know I haven't got around to completely decking out my my studio or something like that but um definitely the The elements that I um, share and show on social are definitely considered, definitely intentional. You'll notice that I have hipster mom in my name. I have plenty of children around, but you will not see any photos of children on my feed or anywhere in my business. And that's a very intentional thing. Um, So it's an an interesting kind of um, arrangement. Interesting and refreshing. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because, and again, this is is no right or wrong, but Mm -hmm. it's a very intentional and conscious thing. And I'm, I'm quite proud of the placement in that, I want people to know that I have other commitments than my job. <laughs> I want it to be really clear because as I said to you when I was running 10 minutes late, like I got daycare drop-offs to do. I got meals to prepare. I got laundry to put on. And because it's in my name, I get I, I hope that people <laughs> realize, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get angry at her for this. She said she was a mum straight up. So that's really good. <laughs> but on the other side, I, I also know that, you know, a lot of mums are out there sharing everything about their family and sharing everything about their children and the children are part of their social media identity and such. And I also want to show that you don't have to do that. I think, just, you know, because that is a big part of Instagram and it's a big community and I love that they so can get solidarity with each other, but that's not for me. And I really conscious and um, am forward about, about, talking about that because I don't think that you have to share everything and I think you should choose what you want to share and you've had discussions with this previously with other people absolutely yeah in fact my I I was kind of it was kind of ripped out of me anyway um I was quite happy to share my kids to be honest I was a really early influencer like before they got paid money and were actually cool um and and I was getting like stuff and they'd, they'd send us have shoots ask us to do shoots with me and the kids and stuff like that and um but my 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 youngest when she was four came to me with a piece of paper one day and she'd like scribbled and stuff and I said what's this and she goes this is the contract and I was like what contract and she said this is my social media contract this is what you're not allowed to do from now on and she like I don't even know how she came up with the word contract to be honest the age of four but she was like you're not to share my images without permission you're not to talk about me on social media without permission and I was like what the heck is this four-year-old but actually it really made me realize that I had been using my and I and seriously I am not having a go at other people this is my story um I had been kind of using my children as part of my 
visibility and I hadn't really been considering the impact to them and they still have this battle with this I've got two kids who work with me and my oldest has decided she's agreed to come on my podcast which is really cool but they all had to go through these things of going hey we love that you're this mum that does this but actually the cost to us is this and that was quite a big shock to me to kind of walk that through and and I always find it fascinating because my youngest is 15 my oldest is 21 looking at that and going oh, I wonder how ever all these other kids are going to feel once they're at that age because oh, it's a big absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And I, there's so much going on in what you just said and we can take it in so many different directions. But one of the first things I would say is congrats to you that you had raised a child who was able to articulate themselves oh, in that <laughs> way yeah. in very clear language and, and, and communicate, to you, communicate that to you in a way that you respected and you understood. Mm. So... That is an amazing child and well done to I know, you. Well, you. It's cr- interesting that she had to communicate it via contracts. Absolutely. <laughs> you, like, kids are really smart. They know what's going on yeah. here. Yeah, they're as smart as you. So they might, you know, so and having respect. And the other thing I, I that raised there is, you know, we talk about consent and we think about consent in this kind of really kind of charged political way how you know consent with my daughter in in, in in these kind of really grown up and adult ways but we don't think about consent on a daily basis mm. inside our homes using our devices on other people that maybe or maybe not have given consent in that moment mm. and so I think we should apply the same sensitivity the same um nuance and complexity and care that we would expect in a grown-up situation to a situation where you're dealing with someone who's far more disempowered than you it's not a it's not a conversation between equals here Mm -hmm. so erring on the side of um respect of caution of um yeah just care for another human being care for another person and and wondering you know what it's you know what kids are like one day something's great next thing it's a you know I don't want to do that absolutely yeah (laughs) and and I think I think for me like my kids for a while some of them that's they were kind of happy they used to, get to go to free movies and they'd get to review them and so they loved all that side of things um but there were definitely a few times that I went over their boundaries and I said well no I want to do this tv clip about this thing you're doing it with me and boy like that's like a long time ago and I still hear about it and I regret that I did not listen to their boundaries around it because I was so focused on this is good for me. And, and I think that that is one of the hardest things about being a parent when you're working is there's this juggle consistently between what I really want to do and my passion forward and you're being pulled back by these children that you you love, you adore, but you're frustrated that you there's this tenuous tension all the time. Oh, my God. And we spoke about the resentment. Mm. Resentment is like the number one emotion that you feel as a a woman in business, as a mother in business, because you see everyone else around you unencumbered, unburdened, unfettered. And here you are with all these extra responsibilities that are invisible to the world. And you have to carry this massive rocks up, (laughs) these massive rocks up a hill. And you see everyone else around you sprinting like it's no big deal. So I, and I think you would feel that, would you feel that more, do you think partly too, from being like with Marie Claire and in that media world where people do often, they haven't had kids or whatever, and they just, they can just go steaming ahead. And when you have children, when you're in the media world, because it's got so much time, it does grind to a halt. Like you've got to make a choice, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it, as we, I, I was saying before, this is a daily battle for me. I, uh, you know, you you looked into my world and you thought this was this woman with like infinite capacity and amazing kind yeah. of business and you know everything going gang. <laughs> yeah, back. like and yeah, I'm, like wow, look at this. Cr- yeah, <laughs> I know, and I'm both really proud of that, but I'm also really happy to pull back the curtain to let you know that it is a daily battle with me on my belly crawling through the grunt work of raising other human beings and. This is um, something I want to talk about, something I want to shout from the rooftops because we don't talk about it as a culture. We glorify the people who are unencumbered, who can sprint faster than anyone else and good on them. I'm glad. But also at the same time, there are heaps of people who can't. And I think the greatest thing that motherhood ever bestowed or parenthood ever bestowed on anyone is empathy for Mm -hmm. not being able to move so fast and compassion for the people in this world who are not able to move as fast as some of the top performers and and thinking that that's great that's okay there's still room for you at the table mm-hmm. there is room for anyone at my table there is 
you know, that I think that's part of what we do as business people. We share our knowledge so generously. We are not up there with, we're not up there lording it over other people. We are welcoming them in whatever level they're at. And wherever you are, there's something for you here. Come and join us and we'll support you through where you are on your life journey. And I think that's a really beautiful knowledge and wisdom that mothers and parents in business specifically can bring to Instagram to life. And I'm glad that we're sharing it here because I hope that I know there are people out there who are listening, who are feeling, oh my God, I could never do what she's doing. (laughs) But the truth is we are all struggling in our own little way. And you can always make something beautiful, clever and wonderful for yourself. You just have to find that spot. Because I think I shared this with you before, and I, I, I'm going to be careful sharing the way I say this because um, I want to protect uh, my, one of my daughters. But um, one of my daughters, when we got to high school, she had a bit of a blip and we had to actually homeschool her for a while. And I had to go through all these things. I obviously wanted to homeschool. And it was the, actually the best thing that ever happened to both me and her. But there was so much anger and resentment initially because I had felt like finally I had her in high school. I had that new stage. I was going to catch up and have that free liberation and suddenly it didn't happen. And I had to step back from the business. I couldn't do as much as I want. A few things went pear-shaped. And and I feel like um, there is this, there is this kind of thing in us where we want it, we sometimes do feel we're running ahead and then the family pulls us back. And, and we're thankful we've got that family and we love that we've got them, but we also feel this frustration of where is the me? Because the me is in the business. It's yeah, harder to find the me and the mother. Absolutely. Massive resentment. And all I would say is that there are different seasons of life. I there think that's season. true, right? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to relax into. And and, yeah. and I've got business owners who are in the baby stage. And I'll say, oh, don't worry. This is a this is hard. You are this is the hardest time. Just step into it. The business will be here in two years. It's okay. Absolutely. But it's hard when you're in there. <laughs> yeah, having the patience, having that fortitude. So I um I read a story on Reddit recently that was very similar to your own story. It was from a dad who was an MIT professor, super high flying. Um, had kids late in life and you know he was a triathlete he was um, flying across the country he'd now been landed with these kids and you know his entire career had blown up in his face because his kids were high needs and he just resented them so much and he had the courage to vent on reddit and um you know the comments there one of the great things about reddit for anyone who's not on reddit is it's a it's um there's no photos so it no. really is a text based mm. interaction and you can really have these vulnerability these moments of vulnerability and people responding just as other human beings rather than any kind of superficiality involved in that interaction and one of the comments was this is your triathlon yes, this quite, is your yeah. new level of success this whatever's come to you this has been given to you as an opportunity to level up and it's what you need to do because later down the track in business or in family or whatever you will be called upon to have these skills the fortitude the resilience the patience the compassion you will need it and here's your training ground that's going to help you get it so So, because I I, want to say because you've got um you know you and I've got you've got a younger child but you've got some slightly older ones as well I do want to say to people who are struggling with this I'm not one of those hands-on absolutely lovey-dovey mothers mothers I struggle with it is this going to damage my kids I can honestly say to you so my kids are from 15 to 21 and I have the most resilient um self-determined they don't necessarily know what they want to do with their life but they are able to look after themselves are problem solvers they're great that they can have conversations and we've got this really deep really good great connected relationship so I want to just say to those of you that are in the mire and really struggling with this don't feel like you've got to not have the business you can have the business it will feel like there's a juggle but don't not give up don't give up and yield to just being stuck in that mire of being that because you worry it's going to damage your kids because it won't Hmm. it won't they will love you for it yeah and this is the great opportunity that these platforms give us now you know it used to be that unless you got a job at Marie Claire when you were 22 that was it you know like but now you know you're on Instagram you're on YouTube we are not spring chickens we are no no I'm (laughs) sitting we can (laughs) (laughs) we can um 
take hope from, you know, I love looking at your example. You're very fearless online. And I love that, you know, people just get up and do this stuff. You know, you are your only barrier to Mm. communication, to building a business, to building a network, to being part of communities. And there is literally no barrier between like, I'm just going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, Yeah. And, you know, I feel like the best gift I have given my three girls is the fact that I am fearless online. In the end, that is the best legacy I've got for them. Like, there's all this other stuff, like, you know, they can have, the I don't know, whatever I've got that's of value. But of everything, I don't mind if they're slightly embarrassed because I also know they also call me the cool mum. And I mean, I am so not cool. But the fact that they even say that about me is like, I made it. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. And different seasons, you know, one season they'll think you're a total dag. And oh, yeah, no, they do. Think think you're the well. bee's knees. So I always think of um, Dolly, Dolly Parton, you know, oh, like, yes. you know, and look at her career, look at her longevity, look at her belief in herself look at the way she just made herself and stuck to it and you know through being an object of ridicule to being absolutely iconic and a world force Mm -hmm. and she was just herself so I think of people like you I think of people like Dolly and then I just pour myself into that and I think okay they did it I could probably do it too I love that. Well, so I feel like I need to do a carousel post when this podcast comes out with like how to be more like Dolly because that would be awesome. <laughs> exactly. I think and it's part of that that bowerbird nature of being yeah. a business person, you know, pick and choose the the parts of the parts of, you know, what you see that you want to become mm-hmm. and keep them close to you and you will. That is it's as simple as that. So, yeah, I I don't I, yeah. I, I'm not a perfect business person. I'm not a perfect mother. I do exactly what I can do in the moment. Me too. And then I try to show myself compassion when I stuff up inevitably, which I do a lot in both capacities. Yeah, that's I love it. So, Jade, if people want to work with you, and I know you've got the little, little window of time, how would they mm. come about it and how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, so obviously we're in lockdown at the minute. So I'm really focused on my product photography. Um, I've got some amazing brands that I'm working with. I'm rolling out, you know, beautiful still lifes, beautiful flat lays, beautiful stop motions for them. So if you're interested in um, working with me, jump onto Instagram, Hipster Mom Social. You will find me sharing all kinds of tips in that space and you can get an exa- get see some examples of my work. Um, you can also find me online at um, www.hipstermum.com. I have heaps of freebies. I have heaps of um just fun like you said you know bow about stuff that you can pick and choose and add to your pinterest right. board and you know i i love what you did here i love i love this or i want to do something like that and um yeah i just welcome connection with all types of different people wherever they're at at their level um i've got lots of things going on as you do you know you can connect yeah. with my close friends list you can join my facebook group you yeah can, you know, be, fantastic you know. okay yeah, so, fantastic and i'll put some of those links in the show notes too so everyone's got it. so thank you so much jade for being part of today it's been amazing and it's been good because i think we've done that whole thing it is interesting when you're a business mother a mother that has a business that there is this constant thing between here's the stuff we do here in our business and here's what we do in our our mother life and there is this this thing so it was really good to talk about that today so thank you absolutely and my advice would be to wear your motherhood with pride we are in a culture and a society that wants to make motherhood and the labor of home invisible it is not invisible I see you mama I see how hard it is you bring that front and center, you share that wisdom, the knowledge, the patience, the fortitude that you've had to develop in a family setting and you bring it to your business and you are unstoppable. Who could who can compete with that oh, when you've had to, <laughs> all the things you've had to you know deal with in motherhood. If you bring that to business, you will be the best business person in the world. And the more of, the more of us that are together, that can support each other, that can see each other, acknowledge each other, then the better we're all going to do. So I am so excited to connect with your community, to support them however they need to be supported. Um, I love what you do. I love how practical you are. I'm going to continue to be a fan of yours from the side. I'm <laughs> Vice versa. Mutual so fandom. grateful to be here. I can't believe I was on the same podcast as Lucas O'Keefe, who is a total <laughs> bag, by the way. I was just totally fangirling. I, I love that. I love how fearless you are. Like you've inspired me to try things that I, okay. you know, that maybe I thought were off the table for me. Is, so I hope that, you know, we can not, do this. Um, this is probably not podcast appropriate, but my my daughter didn't know who he was, um, who works for us. And she said, who is it? And I showed her a photo and he went, she went, oh, he's a looker. <laughs> 
She's more I, his age group, so it was appropriate for her to say it than I mean. So. Look at who he was talking to. You know, look at what you can do when you have that self. Or when you, it's not even self belief. Like it's not even that we're so confident. It's just that we fucking go for it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I believe like, you look should what go you for can it. Do. You should always ask. You never get. You know, you might get a no, but you never get a yes from the things you don't ask for, right? So, yeah, and the things that yeah. are meant for you will come to you as well. So that's nice that you put yourself out there and. I love that conversation. I love a lot of your conversations and I will continue yeah. to enjoy that from the sides. I'm so Thank glad you. to spend this time with you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I love Jade's energy in this episode. She is so passionate about helping people feel amazing. And I can tell you that when I have embra- when I embraced my brand photography, I started to see a reflection of myself that I didn't know I had anymore. And I think quite often we are going back to that kind of child persona of that playful person we were that can sometimes get a bit lost as we grow up and become a parent and all those other things that make adulting so tricky. I would like to challenge you if you haven't got product photos that are great to invest, put in your budget for 2022 to to make that happen. But I also would really encourage for you to invest in yourself and get great brand photography. If you're in New Zealand, I can suggest some New Zealand photographers. If you're in Australia and you live near Jade, obviously use Jade or find a great one near you to give you some great brand photography of lots of different shots of you that show who you are. Now, I'd love you to share some of those shots and tag me in if you've got great ones um, over the next few days. If you're on Instagram on Identify Marketing or on Facebook, you can um, tag us in Identify as well so I can have a look. And I'd also love to invite you to come and be part of our Map It Marketing group to come and share in there some ideas around how you feel about brands and personas. Right. I would like to give you a few challenges out of this, but first, please do come and be part of our webinar. I've got the link in the bio and the show notes there, um, all about how to help prepare for this final quarter if you're an e-commerce or retail business. And if you come into the Map It Marketing group in Facebook, you will get a discount for that. So come and join, take the discount and come along. If you have got great photography and you're not too sure how to use it, I thought I'd just give you a couple of things that I do. One, obviously, I use them just as straight images. I also have turned them into sticker GIFs or um, stickers for my Instagram stories and movable GIFs. I've got them um, on my signature on my emails. I've used them in print materials. I've turned them into memes. I've turned them into um, added them, taking the background off and use them on carousels. I use those product photos and those personal photos of me everywhere. So it's not just about using them in a single use. You can get those images and you can just use them for everything and infiltrate to build your brand and make you completely visible. Next week, we are talking to me. (laughs) That's all who's going to be there on the guest. And I am going to be sharing with you the lessons I learned as a people pleaser. It's quite a personal episode and potentially you're going to think I was a bit of a wuss, but I am a reformed people pleaser and I'm going to share with you how damaging it was to our business and the lessons I've learned. So be be sure to tune into that and until then, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in today to Map It Marketing with me, Rachel Claver. Make sure you hit subscribe in your podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you want notes or information about today's podcast, go to rachelclava.com slash podcast for more information.